welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on with our Pokemon clone, um, Ringmons, by uh, exploring how, how to run away in a battle. So we've, we've kind of covered a lot of the other aspects, but one thing we didn't do was actually set up the probability of running from a battle. So at the moment what happens is you just run from the battle. It doesn't save any information, it doesn't replace anything, it literally just takes you back to the moment before you encountered that creature and um, we kind of want to have it update correctly now so uh, before I do that here's uh, the new town going in I've added another area that I haven't shown you back there as well uh, I'm not going to show off everything uh, in the videos um, I'm showing some things off in the discord some things off on the channel um, I'm kind of scattering around the stuff that I'm showing at the moment to different groups. Um, this one I'm showing off now, as you can see, this is all the buildings from uh, Corn Wallington and uh, this is Brizzletown. This will be the second area, the second town you come to in the story. Uh, this is kind of, I still class this as like the tutorial area. If you think uh, back to Diamond and Pearl, I believe it was, when you start in that little town, you go up to the little lake, get your creature and then you kind of go around and then you see the professor in his lab in the next town similar kind of vibe I guess um, but in this one you're getting your second main story quest so you'll get your first one in the first town and then the next one here um, and there'll be other quests and stuff in these houses but this is all just placeholder stuff at the moment but this is the general vibe uh, this is also where one of the, the guild challenges will be, and that's going to be this building here. Uh, and the route will actually go off to the right here. Um, and actually you won't be able to cross this part here as the player, and this will be a broken bridge. So you'll come in here, you'll be able to explore the, the one side of the, the, the village, but you won't be able to go to the other side um, <clears throat> until... Uh, or at least the gym anyway, until you actually go all the way around the map. So this is actually in fact gym 7. Out of, uh, guild uh, 7 out of the 8 <clears throat> this is where that will be located uh, and the other lab will be up here as you can see I've kind of made this weird little fancy kind of run around but um, yeah so that's the that's this new town going in it looks very new it's, it's very unfinished but um, I thought I'd just show you kind of what I've, I have been working on this is route 1 slash 2 and then this leads into uh, it, well, it will be Dean Forest, it's called. Uh, so it's a little forest area where you'll be able to catch a b whole bunch of new Ringmon. Um, I also did a vote on the name. You guys voted to keep it Ringmon. Um, so I'm probably going to keep it as Ringmon. Uh, but I have got Ringlings, which was a, a close second. So I'm going to play around with some, um, some sort of uh, logos and fonts and things for those two names uh, and then make my final decision from there. Ringmings out no one liked that so that's gone but ring ringlins and um ringmon are the two contenders that i'm now kind of exploring anyway i left waffling from me let's take a look at some running from battles so if we click play um we'll probably have to pick up a creature i might be still running this in multiplayer no i'm not that's fine okay uh so i'm gonna take uh i'm gonna take Osta for now oh my god he's huge okay i need to mess around with the sizes of the models but um as you can see we still have no um no animations and things but that will come uh over time so let's enter a battle here we go uh we've got a yorkie uh still haven't messes uh, abended the sizes uh, or the heights um there's 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 18 creatures in game now obviously some of them you won't see but uh there are 18 creatures so it's, it takes a lot of work to go through and fix things um I don't know why this is doing this as well. I think it's my computer more than anything. But um, let's uh, try and attempt to run from the battle. So if we click run, Oster attempted to escape. Oster got away safely. Um, and we're back in the main world. And our giant Oster will continue to follow us. So uh, let's escape from this. Let's have a look at how I set this up. That is a Pokedex error I'm getting. I think I need to add in a is valid or something like that. But we'll fix that at some point or another. Okay, so all I've opened up is the battle proxy target, the battle UI, BPI, and the battle widget. First things first, in the battle UI, BPI, create a new function called run from battle. You don't need any inputs or outputs. It can be completely bank. 
uh, but it's just so we can talk between the battle widget and the um, battle proxy uh, for running and in the widget so before we had it that it would just close everything down return us to the level all that kind of good stuff but it wouldn't save anything wouldn't do any of the other kind of bits we needed it to do so what we're going to do is we're just going to on that run button we're going to get all actors of the battle proxy we're going to check it's valid which should always comes back as yes we're going to do a get um uh, of our out axes and we're going to plug that into our run from battle and our is valid and um it's very similar to what we were doing with the capture buttons and the move slots uh, where we get that actor, we get it, and then we um, pass it through into that message uh, so we know who's talking to what and from where. Um, inside the battle proxy is where we're going to start doing all of the good stuff, the actual running, and working out all of the kind of um, the code. So first things first get that event run from battle uh, from the BPI uh, and then we're going to do the dialogue box which is just um, name of Pokemon attempted to escape we wait two seconds it does the check and then we get our result uh, it's very simple now for me again because of the way I'm setting up the multiplayer I'm not saving the game anymore I don't need to because it's all happening within one world um, but obviously, because you guys will still be transitioning through levels, you need to still save the game, which is, or, or at least update the party. So, for example, well, that will happen in there, so that's fine. But you will need to save the game when you are successful. As you can see for me, I'm not doing that anymore because I don't need to. It's all happening within the same uh, level. Um, so remember to do that at the end once we're done. Um, so I'm getting my dialog box attempt to escape. I will show you the code for that, but I, I think I've covered that in a typewriter tutorial. So go and check that out. But um, that's what I'm doing. I'm getting the widget, adding it to the viewport, delaying by one second, and then removing from the parent. And by adding all three of these into here, every time I call that function, I can change exactly what shows up in that widget box. And I shouldn't have any other issues with any of that from that point on. So um, I can keep obviously doing it is my point. But once we've done uh, name of Pokemon attempt to escape, we wait for two seconds and then we run a new function called can run. Now this is where all the fun Pokemon code happens. So we need to basically work out a few things. First thing we want to do is we want to check to see if our current enemy creature, we take their speed, we divide it by four and we check to see if it's below one. If that's true, we can run. And then that's a first check. Very simple. First check. If that comes back false, we need to start using our current ring one speed and checking a few things. So, the first thing we want to check is our selected creature. We take it, its speed and we times it by 32. Then we divide it by whatever our enemy speed is divided by four. And then we check to see if that comes over 255. Now that's going to be a very rare um, occurrence. Very, I, I tried to do some quick maths on that. Um, unless your creature speed is incredibly high and the enemy's creature's uh, current speed is very, very low, you shouldn't really have too many occurrences of that. But uh, yeah, then you'll be able to run instantly because you're way faster than they are, is, I think is the point of it. Um, but if that comes back false, which I think it does, I think this these first two checks do come back false a lot of times. Um, but I haven't done any print strings, as you can see. But this all works perfectly fine. I have had instances where I can and can't run. So it is working as expected. Um, so the next thing we have happen is if that still comes back false, we take that f uh, formula we've had and we generate a random number uh, within range of 0 and 255. And if it comes back less than this figure here, then we can run. And if it doesn't, we can't run. It's very, very simple stuff. Um, feel free to test this yourselves, but to be perfectly honest, it's very, very simple uh, formulas. Now again, I'd normally use a math expression node these days, but um, with the how it's broken down um, and the points in which the checks come out, 
Um, it just doesn't seem very logical to use a math expression node, really. Um, it's very similar to like the capture code with how it's doing so many different checks. Um, but yeah, very, very simple stuff. Uh, I will go through it one more time as, we, as this is a very quick episode, but we take the current ring mon, we divide its current speed by four, and we check to see if it's less than one. If it is, we can run. If it isn't, we do a selected creature. We get uh, our current uh, in focus creature from our party. We times their speed by four and divide it by whatever that speed divided by four was for the enemy creature. If that's over 255, we can run. If it's not, we generate a number between 1 or 0 and 255. If it's less than this formula here, um, we can run. If it's not, then uh, we can't run. Um, so, for example, to put that into perspective, if our creature's speed was 100 after that, um, that calculation, um, and the generated number was 101, we wouldn't be able to run. Um, but again, uh, that's all dependent uh, on who you're using and at what times and what levels uh, certain creatures are. If you're facing a creature that's, um, if you're like level 20 and you're facing a creature that's level 40, that makes that explains why you can't run um, very well uh, from uh, Pokemon battles. Okay, so once we've done that, oh, uh, we obviously, as I said, we've got a boolean, a brand new boolean called can run at the end there, which we're obviously ticking true or false depending on what happens. We do a little branch check on that, and if it's false, we can't run. So we say name of Pokemon, couldn't escape, um, two second delay. We set P first to true, and then we run the enemy turn. Um, and we've been through this before with when you fail to capture something. But what happens is it comes to the end here. It checks to see if P first goes first. If it's true, we end the turn. If it's false, the player has hit their turn. Um, and that's kind of how we run that. Um, and it still does all those wonderful checks that we have set up previously. So that's literally all we need to do, which is great. Um, and then if it's true, we can run away. It says name a Pokemon, got away safely. Two seconds delay just to give a chance for that message to show up and then we do all of our usual things where we get the player control set game mode to uh, game only uh, show the cursor goes to false we get the battle proxy target uh, we get that as zero we change the camera switch to all blank and we set the battle UI to target the reason I'm setting mine to blank, by the way, is because, again, they're all in the same world. When you destroy your battle target and you load up the new level, this will be irrelevant for you, uh, just thinking about that. Uh, and then we remove the battle UI from the uh, the, the uh, player's HUD, and we, for me, I battle end, but you guys should be saving your game. This is where you would save your game and update all your information and pass that back through to the overall level, whereas for me, I'm just destroying the uh, battle proxy and uh, returning us back to where our player actually was. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit different for me than it will be from you now, uh, but that's only because I'm setting mine up now for multiplayer. But uh, yeah, hopefully this has helped you in, it's a very small episode, very quick easy one hopefully, um, where we're just setting up that running probability chances uh, within the game. But thank you so much guys for watching, hopefully that's been very very helpful. And uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It's free to do. You can always change your mind down the line. And I will see you in the next episode. Uh, before I do shoot, just one last thing. We are setting up two new tutorial series. We're doing a horror series. And we are also doing a um, island survival tutorial series. So keep an eye out for those. If that's something that interests you, uh, definitely hit that sub button. And I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.